So I'm going to start with the well-known PageRank model. So it was proposed by Larry Page et al. in 1998. And uh, it is a model for measuring the importance of vertices in a network. Uh, so in case you don't remember, so uh, I'm going to re recall for you the definition. So we're given a graph. And uh, there was a random surfer on the graph. And uh, at, at each step, this random surfer will go to a uniform random node of the graph with uh, probability alpha. And with probably one minus alpha, this random surfer will go to a random out neighbor of the current uh, uh, of the current vertex. So uh, the page rank is the stationary distribution of the following of this uh, random walk. Uh, here's an example of uh, how these values look like for this very simple graph. Uh, so the same uh, the same paper also proposed a personalized version of page rank. Uh, so in this case, you're given, you're, you also have a graph, but uh, instead of uh, starting from an arbitrary node, you always start from a fixed uh, source node. And uh, instead of going to a uniform RAM node now, with probably alpha, it always returns to this uh, fixed source node. So this uh, page rank vector is personalized to this uh, fixed source node. And it is, again, the stationary distribution of this random walk. And um, here's, the, here's uh, another example with the same graph, but uh, with the source node being A. OK, uh, so personalized page rank is uh, frequently used in recommendation systems. Uh, in a very classic paper in 2003, uh, Jie and Widem, they first uh, suggested how to use uh, personalized page rank in web search. More recently, uh, a group of researchers from Twitter, they reported their recommender system where PPR values are behind their engine. Uh, it is very well understood how to compute these uh, page rank vectors and their generalizations and variants. Uh, so, uh, so in this work, we're more concerned about the streaming setting. So uh, people have observed that uh, in practice, the graphs are usually not static. They would, instead, they would change slowly in time. Uh, so here's a, here's a graph from a recent paper last year, uh, last year at dub, dub, dub. Uh, They, they uh, counted the number of uh, daily added new edges at Twitter in 2010. So as you probably see, the number of new edges added is around millions per day. Uh, so there is one uh, very interesting property of uh, PPR values. That is, uh, they can quickly reflect the local network changes. So, so, in the, so I, will, I, will, I will tell you what it means by the following example. So suppose uh, so Peter Lofgren is the, he's the guy here. Uh, suppose that he has been following Yuri Leskovec and uh, Ashish Goy on Twitter. So by the definition, uh, when we do the random walk things, uh, half of the walk will go to Yuri, and the other half of the walk will go to Ashish. Now, suppose that today he decides that he wants to follow Barack Obama. Uh, so, so after this, uh, again, by definition, a third of the walks should go to Obama now. And for the, for the, for the other values that used to go to Yuri and uh, Ashish, they were decreased to one third. Now, so another interesting thing is that uh, because uh, a third, third of the walk now goes to Barack Obama, some of the walks will uh, go to his wife, Michelle Obama, as well. So, uh, so, so this would suggest that uh, the recommender system now should recommend Michelle Obama, which is uh, what we would uh, expect intuitively. Uh, so more from formally, uh, this motivated the following dynamic PBR question that we study in this paper. So we have an initial graph with n vertices, and it is followed by k uh, arbitrary edge updates. Now, after each edge update, we want to enter uh, queries of uh, PPR values for all pairs of vertices. OK? Uh, so there are two different strategies where one can solve this problem. So one is uh, you can always recompute from scratch. Uh, and the good thing is uh, you don't need to store anything, and you can use the available algorithms. However, it will be slower. And the second strategy is uh, you can do dynamic update. 
so you can try to restore a, to store a data structure and try to maintain them. So the good thing is that it will be faster because uh, you 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 are basing on some uh, prior information. And the bad thing is, uh, depending on the size of the graph, it can be pretty uh, storage intensive. So it's really a trade-off between the running time and the storage you want. So here's a summary of uh, prior results and uh, our results. So uh, in summary, in this work, we propose uh, a new algorithm for how to do the dynamic PBR question. It is called the dynamic local push. So uh, in case you haven't heard of local push, it is, uh, it is a new variant of a very well-known algorithm in the static setting. Uh, so the main, uh, <coughs> so we also proposed uh, very formal uh, accuracy guarantees and also running time analysis of the algorithm. And uh, the main contribution is that it saves uh, storage by a factor of uh, log n over epsilon where n is the number of vertices and epsilon is the accuracy parameter you want. And uh, it is compared to the previous uh, best uh, dynamic strategy. Uh, so if you compare this uh, formula to the static uh, local push, uh, it is uh, faster by a factor of one over epsilon. So, uh, so I want to add several remarks here. So first of all, we don't know if the theorem or the bound we proved holds for directed graphs or not. Uh, and secondly, uh, so the, the running time we proved is uh, worse than random walk, but uh, in the experiment, uh, our method is slightly faster. So the bound may not be tight. And thirdly, uh, our algorithm can be seamlessly extended to handle batch updates or node arrivals. Okay. Uh, so now uh, I want to give you an overview of uh, our method. So uh, first I need to tell you how local push works in the static setting. Uh, so, so in the algorithm, uh, it maintains an estimate of the true values for each vertex, and it also maintains a residual. You can think of, think of it as the error of the approximation for, this, uh, for each vertex. And uh, there is a push iteration at each vertex. It, mim it mimics the random walk definition as follows. Uh, so when a vertex uh, does a push, it uh, leaves the alpha fraction of the residuals in itself. This is equivalent to when the random walk stops with probably alpha as that vertex. And uh, for the rest, one minus alpha fraction of the residual, there is uh, they're split equally among all the out neighbors of the vertex. And this is equivalent to going to a uniform random out neighbor of the vertex. And the algorithm stops when the maximum residual is reduced to be to the de desired threshold. Uh, so I want to give you a more, uh, more intuitive picture. So in case you know uh, the power iteration, so you can think of power iteration uh, you can think of each iteration of the power iteration as the pushing all the residuals on every vertex all at once. And in the local push algorithm, it only p pushes uh, residual from one vertex. And uh, you have the freedom to select which vertex you want to push. Sorry. Okay, so, so now let me uh, walk through, uh, through an example of how the local push algorithm works. So in this graph, uh, so we, we start from the source node A. Uh, so it has the estimate zero, and it has all the residues on the vertex. So now, uh, so this A is selected to do a push, because it has the biggest residue. And so this is what happens after A pushes. So it uh, splits the residue on B and C. And now uh, B is selected to push because it has the highest residue. And so it splits its residue to its neighbors, which is A, C, and D. And this is what happens when B pushes. And so this algorithm goes on and on uh, until uh, all the residues are reduced to the desired threshold. Uh, 
So, uh, so this is the, the key property of the local push algorithm, which is called the invariance property. Uh, so uh, it, it is basically a flow equation uh, that is satisfied by the random walk. Uh, so, so one way to think of these equations is uh, so when all the ad residuals are zero, then this is the same as the definition of the personalized page rank vectors. Okay, so, so what that means is that uh, local push is a relaxation method, and uh, you can think of it as a, as a first order method, and uh, power iteration is a second order method. Okay, uh, so now the question is, uh, suppose uh, some edge is deleted, which, uh, which is uh, B and C in this example, what should we do? Uh, so, so the idea is that uh, because the graph changed, so we want to uh, restore the invariant. Because the invariant is different for the new graph. And so we want to first restore the invariant and uh, after the variant, invariant is, is stored, it will change the current uh, estimates and residuals on the graph. And in this case, we want to again apply the static local push algorithm again to reduce any residual that goes beyond the threshold. And uh, this is uh, what the algorithm looks like. Uh, I won't go into more detail anymore, but uh, it's really five lines of code. And uh, this is uh, this is what happens in the same example. So as you can see, uh, the the residuals here on B and C increased a little bit. And uh, for the residuals at A and D, they were not changed. And so now the question really becomes: uh, because we have these uh, changed residuals and we want to reduce them, so how much cost should we that would it take? in this case. And so, so uh, the main contribution of our work is uh, an amortized analysis of this uh, dynamic uh, local push algorithm. Uh, so more formally, we proved that uh, so if you have an arbitrary undirect, undirected graph with n vertices and you have k arbitrary edge updates, we showed that uh, the amount of time you need to update is uh, linear in k. And the amount of storage is uh, n over epsilon. Uh, okay, so so now, so now uh, let me describe the experiments we did. Uh, so we used uh, Scala in our implementation, and uh, we used several uh, well-known Scala graph libraries. Uh, so for the networks, uh, so we used uh, several networks from Snap, and uh, for each network, we want to generate a stream, and so we randomly permuted the edges. And uh, we used the first half of the edges to initialize the data structure. And uh, we streamed the second half of the edges one by one. And uh, in the first experiment, we compare our method to the Monte Carlo method. And the problem is uh, we want to maintain the top 50 PPR values in this uh, random edge stream. So the highlight here is that uh, our algorithm saves uh, roughly five times storage and uh, it's under the same accuracy. And uh, uh, the same test result uh, holds when we wanted to top 100. And, uh, and here's the numbers uh, more in more detail. Uh, so, so for accuracy, we uh, measured uh, the number of uh, correctly identified vertices among all the, among all, all the top 50. And uh, the running time is the total amount of time that it takes to keep these uh, values updated. And the running time here is averaged over randomly sampled vertices. So, the, so, so this is for a single vertex, but, uh, that, but it uh, processes the whole screen. So, so LiveJournal and uh, Orchid, they have around uh, tens of millions to 100 million edges. And in the second experiment, we compared uh, our method to a prior uh, local push method that is published uh, here at KD last year. Uh, so the main difference is uh, how uh, these uh, estimates and, and the residues are changed in the beginning of the algorithm. And uh, we found that our method is uh, three times faster. 
And uh, again, here are the numbers in more detail. Uh, so a as you can see, uh, uh, the 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 accuracy is the same uh, in the in the experiment. And uh, finally, uh, so we also did an experiment for doing reverse push. So reverse push is a different model of uh, doing page rank. Uh, so again, I wouldn't go to more detail here. Uh, so the the previous method for this uh, problem is just uh, you you compute from scratch. And as you can see, uh, so the dyna dynamic method is uh, way more faster than the than the computing from scratch method. Okay, uh, so so to summarize, uh, in this work we proposed a new method for how to keep uh, personalized patient va values updated on a changing graph. Uh, compared to the Monte Carlo method, it uh, saves some redundant storage, and this was reflected in our analysis and also in our simulations. Uh, so there are two interesting questions that we were not able to answer. So the first is, uh, can we analyze the for the local push uh, mm, algorithm on directed graphs? And thirdly, uh, can local push be performed in distributed settings when the graphs are too large to fit in one machine? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, uh, could you could you use this uh, in a graph where they're weighted, where where, they're, where it's a weighted graph and the weights are changing over time? Uh -huh. um, and you want to do like some sort of flow analysis? That's dynamic flow. That? Yeah. Uh, so our algorithm, our algorithm works when there are weights, but uh, I'm not sure if the if our theorem holds. It was very n nice talk, by the way. Uh -huh. So I was wondering, there is a different notion of dynamic page rank where the graph changes while the walkers are moving. Yeah. So and then you can say like, okay, so then the page rank should not change a lot once you update the graph, and you can say how much you want to remember the past. So uh -huh. would your your techniques apply for that case? Uh, so I think the local push method still applies. Uh -huh. So so I think what you said suggests a different uh, distribution of uh, random walks. Is that correct compared to the page rank? Yeah, yeah, but it's like the the the. I want you. My, uh, it's like you can imagine that the walkers are moving around and yeah. I update the graph while the walkers are still moving. So in your, your case, see. you're assuming I that see. you want to compute like the same as if the graph, if, if we're starting from the scratch again, right? You uh -huh. just want to compute it faster. Yeah. But I don't want that. I want I to see. sort of capture this yeah. moving property that's going yeah. on. Um, so my intuition is that you can apply that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions? If not, then let's thank all speakers again. Thank you.